I'm still not sure I understand the bendable key here, but regardless, let's fire this thing up. That sounds exactly how it should. In the early 80s, Group B racing was taking off and Ferrari wanted in on the action. Of course, they had to build a car. The car they built? The 288 GTO. When Ferrari decided they were gonna go racing, they were all in. Enzo decided to name this car after arguably the most significant car in the world, the most significant Ferrari, that's for sure, the 250 GTO. The GT, Gran Turismo. The O, Amalgato. Gran Turismo homologation. So the 288 GTO, the 288 stands for the unrounded up 2.8 liter and eight cylinder engine. So the homologation rules for Group B racing were such that you had to build 200 cars. So that was the plan, build 200 cars and go Group B racing. However, that plan was short lived. Group B was canceled by the time this car was ready to go race. I can't say enough about Group B racing. Everyone needs to go do their homework if they don't know what Group B racing was like. The reason the class was canceled, too many guys were dying. The cars were just so powerful and so light, the speeds were just too fast for the class to be safe. So there was so much press buzz around this car by the time Group B was canceled that Ferrari wasn't phased. They went ahead and built the 200 cars and then they exceeded that. They built 272 of these things because of the extra demand. Some guys will argue there's more based on serial numbers. All the cars were sprayed red, except for maybe a handful for a very few special clients. With the idea of going racing, and the idea of going racing is to win, they stuck a serious engine in this thing. The F114B longitudinally mounted twin turbo, so three liter V8. So the first thing you notice when you pop the hood are these obnoxiously large bare intercoolers to try and keep this thing cool. When you're popping the hood, you notice just how vented this is. You know, they really wanted to keep this area cool. Being a race car, the last thing you want is an overheating problem. You're gonna be racing in some hot conditions. And then when you really start to look in here, you realize how far forward the engine was moved. It really sticks into the cockpit here. But again, an engine is the heaviest thing on a race car. You've gotta get the balance right. So this thing was putting out around 400 horsepower, 366 foot-pounds of torque, with a 7.6 to one compression ratio. But the most impressive stat had to be the top speed at right around 190 miles an hour, making this thing the fastest production car of the time. So looking down through here at the platform, you can see the steel tube chassis, but then you can see the, the rear independent suspension, unequal length double wishbone, and they built custom Coney shocks for all these cars. So pretty unique set of wheels on these things. 16 inch front and rear, five spoke starred, you know, pretty neat chromed out wheels here. Going to the body on the car, this was the first body built out of a Kevlar fiberglass honeycomb composite just like they were building the F1 cars at the time. The more time that passes, or maybe just the older I get, the more I appreciate the styling that Pininfarina did on this car. To the untrained eye, the body design looks a lot like a 308, but there's a bunch of features that make this thing look a whole lot tougher. I think one of the best design features is this aggressive chin right here. You've got the ducts here for the front brake cooling, and just nice corners, and when you look at it from the front end square on, it just gives it a really tough look. And then moving to the back here, things get definitely more aggressive. You've got these little scoops here to collect air for the rear brakes. You've got these obvious scoops here, similar to the 308. These are rammed right to the underside of the intercoolers to cool off those turbos. And then you've got this kind of sneaky vent here just to force more air into the engine compartment. But I think the best angle to look at this car from is the rear. When you're standing behind one of these things, you really get a feel for how wide the track width is. You can see how wide the hips are and just how good this thing looks with that kicked up spoiler. But the best design feature on this car, hands down, are these three gills to pay homage to the 250 GTO. These three vents are set at the exact same angle as the Series 2 GTO. If you have a look at a picture of one, the Series 1 has the two gills in front and the vent in the back 
but the Series 2 GTO has the three in the front and the three in the back set on the exact same angle. Sitting in the seat, I mean, first impression is you really couldn't have much wider hips than I have here. It's a snug fit. All the cars had Daytona seats and most of them were black. Only a quarter of them had this orange red Nomex. And the cars that had the orange red, they also had the orange red Nomex insert on the passenger side dash. Now they call it really a red orange or a red, but when you're sitting in here looking at it, it's pretty orange. If you had just hopped out of your F40, you'd expect a lot less of the interior than you get in this thing. There's actually more detail on the interior and the instrumentation than in an F40. This is the perfect steering wheel for this car. It's just classic. It's got such an aggressive rake on it. If I were to take this thing on the track, I'd, I'd want to pull it closer, but that's just the way these things were built. You look at the cluster here. You've got your speedometer, you've got your tack, and then of course you've got your boost here and your oil pressure here. Then water and oil temp and fuel gauge. You've got this entire felt dash here. You've got your three blowers, probably pretty good for defrosting. That would be the most important part to see out of this thing. And then you come down here. You've got your nice tall shifter here, gated, five-speed transmission, down to the limited slip differential. Your feet are certainly offset in the car. Pedals are definitely close enough to get the job done. The brake pedal and the clutch are hung. The gas pedal is mounted to the floor. That makes it tough to keep your heel on the ground as you give it full throttle. So apparently one car was specced with the red orange that you see here, but leather on leather, not the Nomex. So let's have a look in the front storage compartment. I don't know, the trunk, the boot, I never know what to call it. Super lightweight construction on this thing. So in here, we've got our books and records. I'll show you guys those in a sec. And then you've got this leather cover covering up the spare tire here. I have a peek here, she's strapped down with this leather strap. It's always cool to look where the spare tire is. So we've got here, this car, we've got the classy certification. It's got the chassis number. You get your plaque. You know, and then they go through all the documentation of this specific car. So yeah, this thing's 1985. The car's got about 9,000 kilometers on it, so fairly low mileage car. And then these are all the documentation where Ferrari just verifies everything. These things certainly help when selling these cars. Ferrari gives it the stamp of approval. So then you've got your original books here. A nice little pouch, GTO, owner's manual. It's all good stuff to have with this thing. These cars were fairly pricey when they were new, $85,000, but I would argue a pretty good investment. When you consider the Ferrari group of supercars, you have the 288 GTO, you have the F40, you have the F50, you have the Enzo, and you have the LaFerrari. This car really being the first supercar and the first Ferrari supercar, anyone who wants to own the whole Ferrari supercar family has to own one of these. And with only 272 of these things being built, it's the rarest of the bunch. So now we've got to ask ourselves, do you need a car like this? No, no one needs Ferrari's first supercar. But do you want a car like this? Do you want the baddest sports car of the 1980s? Oh yeah, you want a car just like this.